Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to talk to you tonight about a couple of ideas, uh, current division and voltage division, in the context of some simple series and parallel circuits where they often arise. So, uh, so let's take a look. Let's, let's take a look at this circuit. It's a series circuit with uh, five equal resistances all connected together in series. So what does that tell you? One thing it should tell you is that the currents all have to be the same. They all have to be the same because they're all connected in series. Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> the other thing that has to be the same, because the voltages all add up to, the voltage drops add up to 25 volts, and the resistances are all the same, that means that um, the voltage drops have to be all the same. Does that make sense? So um, all the delta Vs are the same. So let me get rid of my mug here. Just do it this way. And then you can see that um, the voltage drop across each resistor is just one-fifth of the total voltage. Each resistor drops one-fifth of the voltage drop to 25 volts. So each resistor has to be 5 volts. Does that make sense? The voltage divider is simply some resistors connected in series in a way that the voltage drop across one part of the family of resistors is proportional to the resistance of that part, and the voltage drop across the other part is proportional to the resistance of that other part. And so each piece gets a fraction of the total voltage drop proportional to their resistance. And what that means is you can immediately write down the voltage at any point. Um, like if I wanted to write down the voltage here at this junction, um, I could simply, it's just one fifth of the total. The voltage here is two-fifths of the total. The voltage here is three-fifths of the total because the resistance is three-fifths of the total resistance. So the voltage has to be three-fifths of the total voltage. So that's what makes it a voltage divider. You can push that a little farther. Um, oh, also I should point out that the voltage, the current through each resistance has to just be the voltage drop across that one resistor divided by the resistance of that resistor. So it makes it half an amp. Uh, you could also, of course, take the total resistance, 50 ohms, divide 25 volts by 50 ohms, and you'd still get, you'd also get half an amp. But because they're in series, each resistance has the same current. That's the idea. Now, the thing is, you could group these guys into groups. So suppose we grouped the resistors into two groups. One group would be a 20 ohm resistance, that's the bottom two guys, and the other group would be the 30 ohms, the, the top three guys. And what if we asked, what's the voltage between those groups? Well, we just worked it out. Because uh, you know that 20 ohms is two-fifths of the total resistance, and so the voltage is two-fifths of the total voltage. So that means it's got to be 10 volts. So that's the idea. Now you can the FET website. This is one. This is a kind of a fun website where you can build circuits, and it's 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 like a playground for circuits. Um, I can make some res grab some resistors here. And you'll notice that these resistors default to 10 ohms. So I picked 10 ohms actually for a reason. It's because I knew that the FET website had 10 ohm resistors, and so it was easy to set up the same circuit in FET. So there I have exactly the same circuit we just had. I'm going to go ahead and add a wire here, bring it down to the bottom, and then I'll just add another wire and hook these guys together. And you'll see, now look, the electrons are moving. The electrons are moving from negative to positive, I can switch to conventional current, and you can see that's the conventional current flowing from positive to negative. Um, here I have a voltmeter. Let's go ahead and grab that guy. Put the negative probe of the voltmeter at the bottom here on the negative terminal of the battery. And then with the other probe of the voltmeter, I can measure the voltage. Oh, I forgot. I need to come in here and change this to 25 volts like it is on our circuit. There we go. And now the voltage here is 5 volts, the voltage here is 10 volts, 15, 20, 25. So you can see that the voltage drop across each resistor is 5 volts. The resistors divide the voltage, they distribute the voltage along the path. Um, and I can, just for fun, let's go ahead and uh, get rid of a couple of these guys. I'll just move this one up. Let's go ahead and change this one to 30 ohms, just like in the example. Change this one to 20 ohms. And I'll just grab another hook of wire here. These guys together. 
And now you can see I've got 25 volts there. I've got 10 volts here. 20 fiftieths of 25. Two fifths of 25, that's 10 volts. So um, the idea of a voltage divider is you, you see some voltage is dropping across this one resistor, some volt of the voltage drops across the other resistor. If I have two resistors in series like this, I know that the voltage drop across each resistor is proportional to that resistance. So that means the voltage at the midpoint is just the, volt, the resistance of the bottom resistor divided by the total resistance of the column times the voltage across the whole column. So that's the idea. All right, let's, uh, let's go back. Now you can do the same thing with a parallel circuit like this, except that now instead of dividing the voltage, we'll be dividing the current. Each resistance delivers some fraction of the total current. And because they're wired up in parallel, we know that the voltage drop across each resistance is the same. So the current is going to be the common voltage drop divided by the resistance of each resistor. So now the thing is, before all the currents were the same because they were in series, now all the voltages are the same because they were in parallel. Before the voltages had to add up to 25 volts, now the currents have to add up to the total current delivered by that power supply. Because all the resistors are the same, the current through each resistance is just the 5 volts divided by each of those individual resistors. So, um, and the currents have to add up to the total current delivered by the source. So each current is going to be half an amp, but there's five half amps, and so the total current delivered by the source is going to be five times half an amp, or two and a half amps. Now there's another way to look at parallel resistances. We could, instead of looking at the resistance, we could rewrite Ohm's law to give a current in terms of voltage. The current is something times the voltage. That's great for parallel circuits because uh, the voltages are all the same, so the currents add. So we could replace the resistance by a new concept. We call it conductance. Conductance is 1 over resistance. So it turns out that if you do that, um, these 10 ohm resistors become 0.1 mo conductances. The conductance is 1 over the resistance, so a 10 ohm resistor has a 1 tenth of a mo conductance. Uh, the units of conductance, by the way, are 1 over ohms, which is pronounced mo, M-H-O. It's just ohm spelled backwards. Crazy, I know. Um, but because the currents have to add, that means that the conductance times the voltage of each conductance, those guys all get added together. But you'll notice there's a common factor of V. So we can factor out that common factor of V, and we get the voltage times the sum of the conductances is equal to the current from the source. Notice that this is a lot like the voltage is equal to the current times the sum of the resistances in the series case. It's the same idea, it's just, this is called the dual. The dual of the series case is the parallel case, and the dual of resistance is conductance. So now the conductance is add. Um, we could also group the conductances in a similar fashion that we grouped the resistances before, and that's how we get current division. So what if we, we, we could group the first two conductances and get a 0.2 mo conductance, and the second set of three conductances, and we get 0.3 mo conductance. And just as before, when two-fifths of the voltage dropped across that 20 ohm resistance, now we've got two-fifths of the current flowing through that 0.2 mo conductance. It's the same exact idea. So um, each, the, the first conductance gets one amp because it's 5 volts times 0.2 mohs. The second conductance gets 1.5 amps because it's 5 volts times 0.3 mohs, and the total current is the sum of the two currents, so that's got to be 2.5 amps, just like it was before. The other thing you can do is build a, a proportionality relationship, just like we did before. Now, instead of taking 20 ohms divided by 50 ohms times the total voltage, we can take 0.2 mohs divided by 0.5 mohs times the total current. Notice that that's um, 
total current was 2.5 amps. So we get 2 fifths, 2.5 amps, that works out to be 1 amp. So that's a, volt, a current divider. Go back here, let's go ahead and um, rebuild this thing. Okay, now I want you to look at the current flowing through that battery. It's got a ton of current. The current through each, you'll notice if I measure the voltage here and here, it's 5 volts. Oh, I've got 20. I forgot to dial my... Let's dial this back down to 5. Okay, that's more like it. The voltage here is 5, 5. 5, 5, everybody's got 5 volts, but what about the current? Let's get an amp meter out here. The current through this guy, half an amp. This guy, half an amp. This guy. Each resistor has half an amp of current, but look how much current is flowing in that guy. 2.5 amps. What about this guy? Only 2. This guy, 1.5. Why is the current going down? Well, the current through this branch is just the current through this last resistor. Right? But if I look at this branch, it's got the current from each of these two resistors. Now this branch has the current from all three of these guys. So this, this guy is measuring the current through this combination of three resistors. Now here's another thing we could do. Let's get rid of these, this one and this one. And let's uh, ask ourselves, what resistance would I have to give this resistor to be equivalent to those three in parallel, well, it would have to be a third of 10 ohms. So that's going to be about three. I don't know if I can, can I give this guy fractional ohms? I guess I can't. Oh, yes, I can. 3.3 ohms, that's about right. Okay, so now it's not exactly 1.5 because it's not, to, to have exactly uh, a third, it would have to be 3.33333, and this only has two digits of precision. So within two digits of precision, it's one and a half amps. I could play the same game here. I could delete this guy, replace this 10 ohm with a 5 ohm. Yeah. Now it's got two tenths of a mo. This has three tenths of a mo. Now we have five tenths of a mo total. And so our total current should be back to two and a half amps within two digits of precision. Here I have 1.52, here I have 2.52. This current should be 5 volts times 2 tenths of a mo, which would be 1 amp. Here we have 5 times 3 tenths of a mo, 1.5 amps to 2 digits of precision. Anyway, that's the idea. A current divider is just the dual of a voltage divider. That's the idea. Anyway, I hope that made some sense. I, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'll pose some questions for you guys at the end of this video. We'll see you next time.